don't want to make mistakes on AIDS, since they know who's around since the early days. But um, they were, the meeting came up with the idea of asking gay men to consider giving up anal sex because of the crisis and what was happening. And some of them, you know, being from a completely other culture, not American, and um, not fucked up about sexuality the way so many of us here are, you know, <laughs> yeah. gay people, and the, it, it was health department officials and lesbian gay leaders, and they were trying to figure out how to tell gay men to give up anal sex. And some of them, being, you know, European and South African, finally stood up and said, look, you know, the rectum is a sexual organ. It deserves the same respect as a penis and a vagina. <laughs> the way that woman responded, <laughs> said to me, people just literally wanted to crawl under their chin. <laughs> so, you know, for the next five years, you know, those people didn't have control over the safe sex campaigns and the safe sex messages. Ordinary, everyday stuff she had with gay men did. And as they died, as funding for AIDS increased, and as the budgets got bigger and bigger and moved to a national level, the messages got watered down. The messages became more conservative. The message became one size fits all. And unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, even today, there's a lot of gay men who are very uncomfortable talking about, you know, gay sex, especially in a mixed company. And the last part I wanted to say was, God, I lost track. <laughs> um, oh God, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah, I just wanted to say. That um, we need to take back safety of education away from the people. I mean, there are great things being done all over the country and all over the world in disconnected ways, in small communities, in small cities. There is really good work being done that's not coordinated. So, especially now with the new Obama era, I'm hoping that young people will be inspired to, you know, you can make a difference, you can make a change. It, you know, even if it's just going on the internet and talking to someone, or, or um, getting educated and trying to teach you what you've learned, it's important to get involved and do something and to take back safe sex education from the people who've had too much power over it. Because, you know, if you have never heard of anal orgasm, you're in the wrong business. And a lot of these people, you know, it's like, you, know, you wouldn't consider asking gay men to give up intercourse if you understood how important and central it was for some gay men, not all gay men, but some gay men. And what's, if I could sum up the failure of where we've gone wrong in the last 10 years, it would be this. And it's what the son of it said, you cannot tell gay men to use a concrete of course, unless you first celebrate the act. Otherwise, it's a foreign voice. You're not speaking the language of the people you're trying to reach. And if you don't understand that it's important to celebrate sex, you cannot tell them. And you know, people are just going to tune you out, which is what's happening. In spite of all of that, I think the rates, they're bad. I mean, they're bad in the communities that are most vulnerable. They're bad amongst lower socioeconomic status. They're bad among people involved with drugs. They're bad among, you know, African-American women who are not always in relationships where they have enough power to protect themselves. They're, the the um, rates are bad among 13 to 19 year olds. I mean, you know, they're not being educated. So where safe sex is getting bad is where people are most vulnerable. And I think it's incumbent upon those of us, you know, who have the time and the energy and who care, you know, to get out there and get involved in trying to reach people who are vulnerable because that's, you know, it's, it's what we're about. You know, we're a community that's been marginalized and denied and dehumanized and you know, deny basic rights. You know, it's our job to put our hand around the sex worker, the impoverished person in the inner city, the young kid who's terrified and is not being educated, the people who, you know, are most at risk are, are the people that we need to, uh, you know, dig down and try to reach and get involved. It's not hard. Anybody can do it. I mean, and it's, and, and um, great work needs to be restored and, and redone. And that's my message. Thank <laughs> you.